Welcome to the Beard Gearhead channel. Tonight I am going to dig into a P-pump off of a John Deere tractor so that I can try to figure out how to turn it up myself based on a bunch of reading and research I've done and crossing my fingers. Um, I'll stress don't do this at home. Don't be an idiot like me. Send your pump out to a pump shop. Don't mess with it. Uncle Sam don't like it either. It could be illegal. But I'm going to bring you with me and show you the things that I'm going to do to mine. The things that a lot of people ask questions to that nobody will answer them when they post it on the forums. And my knowledge is, like I said, gained off of doing a bunch of reading. My Bosch injection manual that I've got. I've got a few different manuals for over the years of stuff I see that might be useful and I grab it, keep it in the library. But we're going to go do th talk about doing some changes, delivery valves, android housing, fuel stop screw, um, gosh, rack stop, timing. I have already said that. I don't know. Do y'all come along with me and we're going to start tearing this down. If you like the video and if the information in my videos is helpful, please take a moment to stop, pause, and hit that subscribe button. If the video is helpful, give it a thumbs up and help our channel grow so that I'll know what kind of content that you all prefer. Thank you. Here a little bit. What we have here is a uh, 11 millimeter Bosch P pump off of the John Deere. I think it's a 48, 4850 or 4855 John Deere tractor off of a 466 engine. My tractor that I'm working on has got a 619 down in it, but it also runs an 11 millimeter pump. 11 millimeter pump. Down here on the side of your pumps, sometimes they're visible, sometimes they're not going to have the pump is rotated. Down here on the side, you'll see the uh, the pump number. Uh, sometimes you can get the Bosch numbers wrote down and break and get the size of them that way. But if you look at the side of it, most of them will talk, start out with PES, and it'd be PESP. Is that what it is? PES. Let's see what this one is. PES six P. And a 6P, the P after the 6 stands for P pump. Some of them be PES6A for an A pump. Uh, but this is a P pump. It's got uh, 11 millimeter plungers and barrels in it. I'm going to take one of the delivery valve holders off if my tool, I've got an old Bosch timing kit from when I used to truck pull with my Cummins truck 20 years ago. But let's see if it fits. Yes. I have my delivery valve removal tool and we're going to take this delivery valve out. This is essentially a Bosch P3000 series pump. And the Dodge engines on the Cummins are a P7100 pump. I'm going to pull a delivery valve out of these because I've put uh, cut delivery valves in my old, my old Dodge. I still got my old truck from yesteryear. It's just been detuned a little bit, but it's got cut delivery valves in it still. And they're extremely inefficient. But if I can pull those out, I've got a factory set of delivery valves. That came out of it and I'll swap those back out and I'll take if they match up the same size from a P3000 to a P7100 I'll stick those cut delivery valves down in my tractor when I'm doing the rest of the pump work that uh, I'm fixing to start. I'm going to tear this pump apart and we're not sure if this pump is good or not. We bought this off eBay as a, uh, a spare pump, a core. I'm going to pull the aneroid off and see the governor spring adjustment down inside uh, then I'll take the back cover off for the fuel stop and show you that how to turn the fuel up on it and uh, what else was I going to do something else if I can think of it I'll I'll let you know but I'm going to take this delivery valve holder out and then we'll get the mic out already sitting here and we'll mic these up and check them
Chinese tap. There she goes. I'm kind of OCD, but when you're doing finite stuff like pump work, blowing stuff out, you just broke a seal. It's not been broken years, so there'll be rust and dirt down in there. You're gonna have some debris come loose. Take some press air and clean that out. When you take this off, there'll be a spring and a small plunger under it, I think. So be careful and don't lose any of your parts. That one's coming off really tight. Let's run it back in some. My O-ring is catching me is what it is. There are O-rings on these. If you, yeah, it's starting to work its way up. This one's going to cut. So if I can take it back in and get it to grab. If you're careful and don't cut your O-ring, you can reuse them. If it doesn't come out good and it stays in while the threaded, threaded part of the delivery valve holder starts coming out, then, uh, you can pretty much bank on you're going to have to replace your O-rings. It looks like this one is not going to come out, so this part will cut. I found a 20-pack uh, of delivery valve holder O-rings on Amazon last night for like 14 bucks for 20 of them. So I'm going to order that when I get ready to uh, change delivery valves in my truck and in my tractor. Yeah, she's stuck in there. Let me cut. So if you do do delivery valves, make sure that you go ahead and buy O-rings for them. I was looking there yesterday. The reason I looked at those O-rings yesterday for the delivery valves on the uh, delivery, the seals for the delivery valve holders is I'd found a set of 191 delivery valves on Amazon for like $28. $28 for a full set of delivery valves like this, but they weren't, uh, they did not have seals included with them. So for $28 and $14, $15 for seals, you can have some decent size delivery valves put in your pump as long as you've got the proper tool to do it. Of course, they also sell that with it too. Now here's the delivery valve holder. Let me turn a light on here because it's so dark in my basement. I don't have a light on this side of the beam. Here's your delivery valve holder. You take it apart and I don't think anything's loose inside of it. But when you take it loose, you will have bring you over here and show you this once you pull that delivery valve holder off you can see the spring so I can do all this one-handed you can see the spring here remove your spring and then this one's just got the spring in the washer so let's take us a pick Kind of hard to do one-handed. I might have to put this down. I'll tell you what, let's get a magnet if we can find it and let's just go ahead and pull it all out. So when we pull this out, it pulls out as an assembly. And there are more items down in there that you do not want to mess with. This is as far as you want to go. I hope you all can see this. My controller from my camera went dead, so I'm kind of doing this blindly. So once you pull that out of the pump, here's your copper washer that was under it. And then here is your delivery valve. So when your plunger in your pump pumps fuel, it pushes that fuel up. And that fuel pressure pushes this delivery valve up, which lets that fuel escape up through here out your delivery valve holder to your injection line and to your injector. Hope you can see that. I think I was getting down too low. Like I said, this sits on top of your plunger. Fuel comes up through it, pushes your delivery valve open. Fuel comes up through these slots. You can see how this is slotted. It's got four slots, cutouts in it. That comes up through those slots 
and past this neck now where the performance side of these delivery valves comes in for the most part is under this neck right here this little neck right here the ones that are in my 5.9 truck my Cummins truck when I got those they had been chucked up in the mill and all this was gone this neck was way way thin in here it dropped the RPM on the, the it took so much pressure off the pump that it dropped the RPMs on the truck like two or three hundred RPMs I had to go set the uh, low idle screw back up on it but these look the same size so I'm going to mic these out right quick the body the width here the width here is not so much a concern the width here is what we're after we'll check the bottom to see if they're any different that may not matter and then check the overall height and uh, hopefully not get these mixed up this one out of this deer pump actually doesn't have hardly any numbers on it, it just says UC most of these have numbers on them this one does not, it's got the Bosch insignia and says UC so here is that one put this one over here, let's grab one out of the Cummins pump These may not work, they may be too big, which I don't know if the overall diameter of this is the same. So, one, so there's eight, almost point eight, even point eight. 0.806 so the outside diameter is the same the bodies are made a little bit different but the delivery valve holder should center that up I hope we'll check that to the height What are we at? 7.71 7 I'll get my glasses. 0 0.717 0 0.729 It's not a terrible amount of difference there. Can't get those mixed up. Every delivery valve, even on Competition Diesel's website, I looked last night and there was a delivery valve discussion, and there were like 10 different delivery valves. Anything from a stock up to 181s, 191s, and cut delivery valves. And they all had some difference in them. Some of them did have a difference in the body. So let me check. Check these. So it will sit down in there. Now the catch is, is will the delivery valve body We'll see how these compare up in the delivery valve body. I read last night that they will work and I read last night that they won't work. And I'm almost thinking that these won't work because of that right there all right that answers that question guys some will work and some will not you can get different delivery valve holders I do not know what the numbers are I've seen some on the on competition uh, some of these competition diesel sites last night that uh, you can get a bigger delivery valve holder and that may be what you're up against here P3000 P3000 delivery valve holder is just smaller than the P71. Now something else, if you had spare parts, you may be able to take a delivery valve holder off of a P71, and which may be exactly be what I do, because I've got a spare 5.9 motor down there with a 215 horse pump on it. I may take and swap the pull delivery valve holders out of it and see if they will work, and if they will. Or I may just take some 
I might just see if I can't find me a set somewhere. Let me check and see if the thread counts the same. All right, so that answers that question. We'll put this back in. So P7100 delivery valves out of a 5.9 Cummins truck will not. Let me turn you all up a little bit here. Will not fit in a Bosch P3000 series 11 millimeter plunger pump. 12s may be different because a P7100 on a Dodge truck, at least for a 97 model, is also a 12 millimeter plunger. And that may be where the difference, the cutoff may be 11 and 12 millimeters. So the 12 millimeter, millimeter pumps may run a bigger delivery valve holder than the 11s, which would just be my luck. Uh, the other option is, is I could take these and I, I'm doing a county farm tractor, so I'm not really worried about equilibrium on the cylinders. Uh, this tractor gets pulled uh, once a year you could, I thought about chucking these up in my lathe over here, I don't think I can find a bits holder small enough to do that though and turn it. You could take a Dremel and notch the neck out on these yourself and make your own set of delivery valves if you got in a pinch. Do not recommend that. I am by no means professional. We're talking about redneck, redneck engineering, redneck tractor pulling. Worst comes to worst to get more fuel. Put our copper sealant washer back in there. What are we missing? Our spring. And let's put our spring back on top of the delivery valve. And very carefully set that over. Feel for it and make sure it centers up. And then start it back. And don't forget, I don't have a seal on this one. So we'll just run this down and not torque it. Aneroid housing. Everything I read last night said if you want if you're going for full power, max your pump out, take the Android housing completely off. Either make a plate, take it off, gut it, cap your line off, and once we do that, I'm going to take this one off. Like I said, this is a spare pump. I'm experimenting on this pump before I go out there and start turning screws on the pump that is on my tractor already. Uh, so I'm going to take this Android housing off and try and get some light down in the hole and show you the other piece that we are after. Let's start with taking the top aneroid cover off. There should be a diaphragm under here. That boost, this is your boost line coming in from your manifold or your turbo. When boost comes in, it manipulates that diaphragm, pushes against that diaphragm. And then on the other side of the diaphragm is the spring, so it pulls back up when there's no boost. Then that, uh, the rod inside this aneroid housing makes con con uh, connection with the rack arm in there. And that's what holds the rack arm and the fuel back. It doesn't let the engine fuel or doesn't let the pump send fuel to the engine until there is boost built up. There we go. There's that and one washer. So under that is your diaphragm. Now apparently this diaphragm is connected to the rod in there and that rod won't come off until I remove the aneroid housing. So under here, you may not be able to see it, there's a spring. And let's take this back plug out just to check and see, cause this may be the smoke adjustment, what people call the smoke adjustment for this pump. Let's see what size it is. Bigger than that. There we go. Yes, that is it. On a Cummins P7100, your aneroid housing has got a 
a horizontal housing and this unit with the diaphragm is on the back end well if you take that plug out on the top there's an allen plug just like this on the top of that and now we're talking about a 12 valve cummins 94 through 98 in the dodge trucks and that's where that's what i cut my teeth on that's where i learned all the to do all the fuel stuff myself just by trial and error but that housing sits on this way because it's got an RQV governor. This is a RSV governor. And what we always call the smoke wheel. It's a it looks like a brake adjuster wheel. It's got little slots in it. You can take a screwdriver and manipulate it inside. When that comes all the way loose is when you get full fuel. And that's what makes the smoke. When you're going to remove a fuel plate forward and then you back that screw off for your spring inside is loose. This yeah. spring is loose. And that's what lets you get all that fuel control or the lack of fuel control. Hopefully I can bring it in to where you can see it. Star wheel, smoke screw, whatever you want to call it. You back it off where it's loose. The spring inside of it's loose. Because what this does when this is pushed down, it compresses that spring. So smoke screw, star wheel, whatever you want to call it that's in your Android housing on a P-pump. That's what... That's what limits your smoke control. So if you back that off and loosen it up, you want to see fuel and smoke, wasted fuel and smoke nowadays with diesel being $6 a gallon or whatever it is. Uh, you loosen that, tor that, that star screw inside until the spring that it contacts is loose while the diaphragm is pushed down and closed. And that'll be full fuel at the bottom end so that rack can travel all it wants to without waiting on boost command to activate it poor fuel mileage but for tractor pulling truck pulling that's what you're after I'll see if you can see it inside of here I don't know if you can or not right inside of here you'll see it looks like a uh, a brake adjuster wheel for uh, old drum brakes you can see it right here and you can take a screwdriver and you can turn that thing and you want to turn it to where it takes the tension off of that spring I'm not going to go any further than that. Matter of fact, I'm going to put this back together, put the plug back in it, and I'm going to... Actually, I'll take that back. I'm not going to put it back together yet, but I'm going to go ahead and get me... Looks like a 10 millimeter. You'll have to have some wire cutters because these have tamper-proof screws that are wire tied together. That way the dealer will know if you've been messing with it or Uncle Sam or whoever. So let's cut that off. Get a 10 millimeter, I think she was. It's like a wrench. The elusive 10 millimeter. Nine. Ten. All right, take a pair of pliers and uh, break that wire. It's just real thin gauge wire. Pull it out of the screw heads. So take your tamper proof wire out of your screw heads they actually put it on the back side where it's even harder to get to take you a 10 millimeter remove your bolts now we're going to uh, we're going to learn about this as we go guys because I don't recall ever having the aneroid or AFC housing air fuel control. I don't recall ever having one of these housings off of a RSV governor. I put governor springs and uh, delivery valves and move fuel plates and play the smoke control wheels and done all that on a P7100 pump. But this is the first time that I've ever been into an RSV governor. Now the I will point out here, RQV, RQV governor, it's on the P7100 pumps in the Dodge trucks. Those are an on-road governor. Uh, they're designed more for highway use, throttle on command by the foot. These governors are designed more toward you set your throttle to whatever RPM you want it, and then the pump controls fuel rate itself to make the pump maintain that in RPM for that engine. But at the same time, if you all ever seen pro stock tractors pull or hot farm tractors pull, and you hear that lope as they're moving around the pits, that lope can only come from an, what they most people call an ag governor 
an industrial governor and RSV governor. And from what I read yesterday, that lope comes from down in the bottom is your idle spring, idle control spring for the rack arm. Then up top here is your main spring for the governor on the governor arm, the rack arm. And when you set RPMs up on these things to where they don't defuel until three, four, five thousand RPM, that puts so much tension up here that I think it actually pulls the arm away from the idle spring down here. And they said that arm kind of flops, jumps back and forth the whole time trying to compensate that idle spring trying to do its job, but yet the top spring is pushing too much, is pulling too much pressure on it to let it do its job. So it's trying to correct itself constantly. And that's where that lunge and that lope comes from. Again, guys, I'm doing this, learn this as I go. I sit down and I read and I read and I read, trying to learn stuff. Fuel pump info, people will not divulge fuel pump info. This is all for learning. I do not recommend you do this yourself. This is kind of a CYA statement. If, uh, if you want to risk blowing your stuff up, pour it on it and go for it. That, that's my CYA statement. I'm, I'm an idiot. Don't do as I do. But I read and I read, trying to learn all this info, but it's so limited on these fuel pumps because nobody wants to divulge that information. I called Shides yesterday and uh, they want seven, eight hundred dollars to max one of these pumps out, an 11 millimeter pump out, seven, eight hundred dollars. That's probably gonna be a set of delivery valves maybe a spring but i'm not sure if there's alternate springs to put in these i've asked and nobody will tell me but for all i know they could just be putting delivery valves in it tightening up the screw i'm going to show you all and then adjusting the full load granted they would be doing this on a test stand where it should be done but for the homegrown weekend warrior county fair once a year pool we're going to try this and the engine is going to be my test stand and i'm just going to have a a phone book there to kill it if I need to. So the bolts are out of the aneroid housing. Let's pull it up and see what so nothing permanently connects to it. Alright, that's why I was looking at yesterday. Here's the o-ring. Let's get that off before we lose it. When uh, this arm comes in here, there's an arm, a rack arm that moves back and forth and there's a uh, rod that goes across it. That rod intersects into this and this controls how far that rod can move pushes up and down on it to let that rack arm move to let more fuel come in now everything i've read yesterday says take this off leave it off make you a block off plate and it'll be full fuel all the time so we may try that but there is one piece one part individual I'm, individually I'm looking for. So the governor spring, I was reading in my Bosch manual last night. I've got a, uh, I've got a Bosch P pump series manual, and you kind of got to read through the manual and digest the information to the best of your ability to see how it works. Uh, I went through the disassembly and assembly of the governor last night. There's a little arm assembly in there that the main governor spring hooks to. And there's a screw on that. And the book says during assembly that once it's all assembled inside of here, before you put the cover back on, you take that screw, and apparently when you turn that screw, it's a click type, just like your governor springs are on the P7100 pumps, but you've got two sets of them. It's got that retainer with your multiple set of springs, and you put it down there and you turn it down however many clicks. This screw does the same thing, it's just one screw. And the book says to, when you initially set this up, to have it ready to put on the stand. Every pump has its own pump spec. But when you put this on the, you, you do a preset before you put it on the stand when you assemble this. You take and put that screw, you run it all the way in to where it's dead stops, and you back it out between 10 and 16 clicks. And that's supposed to be a baseline. Now once you get the pump, back on once you get the pump on the stand you measure this there's one piece you back out maybe it's the high you set your uh, high idle speed stop and then you put the pump on the stand and you run it and you're checking for rack travel and 
you have to adjust that screw until you get 16 millimeters of rack travel for this particular pump. So in theory, if that screw is controlling rack travel, based on how many turns it is at X amount of RPM, you should be able to either turn in or turn out that screw, whichever one should add more tension to the spring. Because what you're after is either, the way this works, these, it's got fly weights inside. These fly weights will open up. When they do, they've got a retainer in the center that pushes out. When that pushes out, there's a cantilever on that arm and it pushes that out and pulls that arm back to where it cuts your fuel back. So you're, what you're either wanting to do is prevent the counterweights from coming out as far or coming out as quick. So you could potentially lighten the counterweights or you want it to where the counterweight has to exert more force against that arm before it'll defuel the pump, which means you have to put a stiffer spring or stiffen the spring up. So we're gonna try and manipulate that screw to see if we make the screw, the spring tighter to where the weights have to exert more force on it and see if that will control the RPMs. I'd like to get it up to where it doesn't defuel till 28 to 3000 RPM. Then we'll go back here on the back side and uh, manipulate a full stop, turn it in. You do not want to turn these in all the way. Uh, something else I wanted to show you all. This is uh, something I read years ago and I actually saw some for sale the other day. This governor arm back here controls what we call the rack. These have plungers and barrels in them, and the way these pumps work to control fuel flow is there's a rod that runs through here. It's got little serrated teeth on it, and as that rack moves back and forth, it actually turns the barrels in here and creates a port opening, which limits how much fuel gets dumped back out of the ports. And that's how your accelerator works on these. So that rack goes all the way forward until it hits a stop and then that's full fuel for that rack it can't move any further there is also up here a rack stop I hope that light's not right in your all's eye a rack stop this button right here if you take it out you will see the end of the rack the rack travel rod if you pull this out this will be a solid plug they make or you can take and salvage your plug you've got and uh, modify it a hollow plug and what that does is instead of that rack coming up and hitting that dead stop on that plug, you can drill that plug out or get a hollow plug and allow that rack to travel even further. I have put one of those in before on a truck that I sold to a guy and we fixed it up for truck pulling and it puts out a tremendous amount of fuel. We didn't have a fuel plate in it. I think the delivery valves may have been the same. I can't remember if we changed them or not. And I actually shimmed the governor springs up solid and the amount of fuel that truck put out for a 12 millimeter pump was ridiculous. I don't know if you all would be able to see it or not, but down in that hole, there is a flat head screw. Between those two pieces of linkages is a flat head screw. I can't get my camera down there and the light at the same time, but hopefully it'll focus. That flathead screw is the screw I was referring to. That's your governor spring screw. We are going to try and get this rack moved around to a point that we can actually get in there and uh, tighten that screw on up. The arm in there, the governor arm, well, let's see what they actually call it. I went in there and got my Bosch book. Uh, number 66 in the book is the control rack lever. So this is essentially your throttle lever on the side that that spring is hooked to and you can feel that tension on it right there. Um, but you have to roll that back to be able to expose that screw head. Your low idle screw right here in top, the top one's your low idle. You're going to have to uh, back it out to be able to roll that that arm back up, that control rack lever arm, roll it back up enough to access the screw that's on it. So on any pump, either take calipers, take pictures of it, get a thread count. This one has one, two, three highs out and the nut is straight up and down. So before you do anything, document. Of course, I always take pictures. Let's see if we can get it to focus. Take pictures of it.
That way you can always go back and whatever you do to your pump clicks if you mess with the screw on the torque spring. You're better off to go ahead and turn that screw all the way in. Take this off where you can get to it. Back this out. Measure it. Document it. Back this out where you can access that screw. If you're going to mess with that screw, again, it may not do anything. It could kill your pump. could blow it up. If you're going to do that, always get your base setting. For this one, you can measure it here. For the screw, it's a click screw and it's like a needle on a carburetor. It starts from the bottom and adjusts out. So on this one, you'd want to go ahead and get access to it. Turn it all the way in and count the clicks. Document those clicks, that's your baseline. Then back it back out and adjust it where you want it. So I'm going to take this half or 9 16 take the low idle, take the low idle screw and let's back it out and what we're doing is trying to get more access on this arm so this arm should be able to go back when you back this screw off and it is it's moving back as we do that actually I think that's a 13 millimeter but it's already loose so as you move this back this arm is coming back and as this arm comes back that's it, that's, it. that's max right there. As that arm comes back, it's gonna roll that screw head on up some to where we should be able to get a screwdriver on it now. Hopefully, according to the book we can. So go in here, I get my light, my light won't go down low enough, there we go. So now we can hopefully access it and it does. I can feel tension on it already. It clicks. One. Two. Nineteen. Twenty. That's tight. So twenty. Now see, I'm not sure if we should be loosening this or tightening it, but it appears by tightening it on in, because the book is kind of unclear to try to figure it out, but by tightening that screw, there's tension all the way back now on that arm. Which has made that arm even tighter, so it may be tightening it. So there's good tension, let's back it back out. What do you say, like 22? I've done forgot my number, folks. I'll have to go back and rewind this video if I ever actually get ready to use this pump. So there's plenty of tension all the way back at dead stop, and it won't even run there because the idle's all the way out. So let's back it back out and see if that arm loosens up. One. Nope. One. Two. Three. Four. Yeah, it's already taking tension off. Nineteen. Twenty. Yeah, see now your arm is real loose. So apparently that runs on a fulcrum and if you screw it in, it puts even more tension on that spring. So I'm going to refer to the book here now that I see that in action and see if I can figure something else out on that. Alright, I went back to reading here in the adjusting section of the Bosch manual. Um, I missed this last night. I was too excited when I found this says if rack is not at 16 millimeters, this is this is running on the stand at, at 1,050 RPM, which would, the pump turns half the speed of the engine, so that should be, what, 2,100 RPM on the engine. If the rack is not at 16 millimeter travel, stop the test stand, turn the governor adjusting screw in to increase rack travel or out to decrease rack travel. So that would make sense. That's why the arm was getting stiff. The arm should be getting stiff because you're putting more tension on that spring. You want more tension on that spring so that it takes longer for those fly weights to roll out and push that arm. So the catch is, is how many do you turn it? It's gonna be hard to know on mine. I'm gonna go on this, I'm gonna go on my tractor and turn in the full load fuel screw. Most people say to leave like three threads out. I've heard multiple 
multiple pieces of info. I've heard that one turn is 30 horsepower. I've heard that a quarter of a turn is 30 horsepower. I've heard run it all the way in until there's three threads left, but don't run it too far because you can damage the rack. I've heard the three thread rule a lot. Now, as to how many horsepower each one gives, that's all will be subject to barrel diameter. It will be subject to what the engine it's on, what turbo you're running, what injectors you're running. So it's kind of hard to say. Now, if you were looking at just like say a 4430 John Deere, you know it's a nine and a half millimeter plunger. So everybody's got a good rule of thumb that X amount of turns equals X amount of horsepower. I'll give you that. But this is on a 619 that's been transplanted to another engine that came out of a John Deere scraper. So who knows? But I'm probably gonna run mine in. I'm gonna check it and see how many turns it's out already. And then may go with the uh, leave three threads left rule if it's pretty far in already. That motor's already 250 horse, so I'm curious to see how far in that fuel stop screw is already. But the tractor doesn't smoke any. So we'll find out. We're gonna pull the cover off the back of this pump and I will show you all what I'm talking about on the, uh, the fuel stop screw. Down here on the back of your pump, your pump is sitting on the engine. At the back bottom of the pump, you'll see this square plate has four holes in it. This one's not been tampered with. It's either never been built, never been tampered with, or it's been built and they put the, the warranty wire. This one actually has the tamper wire and tamper-proof screws. So I'm going to have to see if I can get these screws out. It's actually the first one I've seen with those in it. So we'll take our pliers, rip the wire loose. All right, so 10 millimeters again. Let's put our aneroid housing bolts back in before we lose them. Something else I want to point out, we mentioned gutting or removing. We mentioned removing this to get that full fuel at low RPM as soon as you hit the pedal. You don't have to remove this, put a block off plate. You saw earlier when this top cover was off, there was a little bitty nut on a shaft. You can take that nut off and disassemble this whole unit and then put your O-ring back on it. This will be gone, it'll just be an empty housing and then it'll still look factory. You will still have to cap off your line, but if you're really wanting it to look factory, you can leave your line hooked up here, go up under the hood and cap the line up there and put a plug in wherever the line come out of so you don't lose boost. And then you'll not have this arm sticking down to keep that rack from not traveling and it'll roll smoke like none ever, but it'll look factory. So keep that in mind. Don't just take it off and throw it away and get stressed out about having to make a plate and drill bolt holes and make it look factory and get caught out on it. Just gut it, put it back on the pump. When I ran my Dodge, my P7100, that's what I did. I took everything out of the aneroid housing and it was just an empty shell that just kept oil from slinging out. All right, so let's take these 10 millimeters out. y'all hear background noise guys I'm sorry I'm in my basement there's two kids and a wife upstairs let's take a big screwdriver and see if we can get these tamper screws to move yes we can looky there so there's one so I get too excited we gotta get the other one out there we go all right so we're in business there I'll take your four screws out Again, try and keep everything clean. I just pulled the cover off. Try and keep everything clean, guys. Blow it off as you do everything. That looks like that may have what I was reading last night was called a torque capsule, but I'm not sure. I'll have to look in the book again. All right, so this pump, from what it looks like in the book, some do, some don't. This one, I'm thinking, may have what they call a torque capsule. You have to look it up because I'm not 100%. Last yesterday is the first time I'd ever read up on a torque torque capsule, so I am not exactly sure as to what it does. I did read some input on some of the forums last night that it really woke some of their tractors up and helped the RPMs throughout the range and helped where the power came in. But the bottom screw right here, and I hope you can see this. The very bottom screw is just a, a threaded rod with a jam nut, and there's a, a screwdriver slotting into that. That, 
That is your full load stop screw. This is the screw on a P pump with RSV governor that everybody talks about turning in to get the fuel. Now the manual actually from a baseline, I mentioned a while ago, everybody said leave three threads showing from the jam nut. That means have the jam nut almost down at zero lash. And then when you're there, make sure there's at least three to four threads showing. The manual actually gives three to four threads as the start. It says turn uh, loosen lock nut on full load stop screw, turn screw in three or four thre until three or four threads protrude from lock nut, tighten lock nut. So that's where they start as a baseline. So obviously they come out from there because on this one there is eight or nine threads showing. So again, a 10 millimeter, you'll need a 10 millimeter socket break it loose take you a flat screwdriver once you get that nut broke loose again it's the bottom one if yours has one doesn't have a torque capsule in it there could be something else there another threaded screw but you're looking at the bottom one take your jam nut loose roll this rod in turn that screw in until these you can do it one turn at a time do it a quarter turn at a time i did read yesterday some of your hardcore guys your, your keyboard warriors on some of them last night we're talking about guys going around doing a whole full turn and a full turn could be ungodly horsepower it may very well be like i said it depends on your engine your setup if you're going to do this and we did do this on our 4430 once we did it at a quarter turn or a half a turn at a time and on that one it was actually a larger pump it may have been a 10 millimeter or maybe it could have been this pump we had on the 4430 at one time with just 404 and quarter turns and half turns put a flame coming out of the stack pretty quick at night time and we ended up backing it off and matter of fact we ended up taking the pump back off putting the 9.5 millimeter pump back on it because uh, it was just too much but this is what the book calls your full load stop screw this is where your fuel comes from this is your easy fuel upgrade for your tractor if you want to go to the county fair and you want to throw a bunch of horsepower to your tractor and roll the smoke before you leave that evening, pull your cover off, back that jam nut off, turn that in however much you think you need to, put the cover back on, go to the fair, go to the pool, hope you don't blow it up, come back home, set it back out where it was. Again, I will reiterate, before you ever touch anything on these, before you ever break this jam nut loose, take you a pair of, take you a pair of calipers. Take you a pair of calipers and come in here and measure that height. Measure that height down to that jam nut to the end of the screw. This one is sitting at 3.46. 3.46. Write that down. Etch it into the pump. If you don't have calipers, go in there. Pay attention to your orientation on your slot. Is it up and down? Is it side to side? Is it an angle? And then count how many threads are there. Make sure you always keep that baseline. No matter what you turn on these pumps, always get a baseline measurement on these things so that you can go back and put it exactly very close anyway where it was. Star wheel. Star wheel on your Android housing is the same way. If you turn that thing, you need to be counting those clicks. Do about two or three clicks. Go in there and hit your spring. Make sure your spring's not loose. Two or three more clicks. Check your spring. The moment that spring gets loose, you stop and you write down how many clicks it took you to get until that spring was loose. Because, especially on a Dodge truck, you can make all kinds of power with one of those in a P7100. But after a year or so, and when fuel gets to the roof at $6 a gallon, you're going to be wishing that you could go back and put that pump back where it used to be. You're going to want, you're going to wish you had marked where that, that peep it where that fuel plate is inside of that inside of your AFC housing on, on a P7100 because once you mess with these and you don't write your measurements down it is very hard to get it back fine-tuned the way it comes from the factory without taking the pump off and sending it back and getting it retested on a test stand somewhere so there is our governor spring from what I gather on the governor spring like I said Take your AFC off, gut your AFC housing, that gives you full fuel as soon as you hit the throttle, no waiting for boost to come up. 
got the AFC housing, set it to the side. Come in here, take your low idle speed screw, back it out to where you can take your throttle arm back and you can expose that flathead screw inside. Turn that screw in. How much? I have no idea, guys. You'll have to go in there and hook your tractor up to something real heavy and adjust it. Go try it. See where your RPMs are at. And then adjust it again until you get it to where you want it. Then put your gutted Android housing back on. Run your low idle screw back in to where it was initially. To where you don't mess with your idle. Now something else to keep in mind, once you start messing with all these measurements inside of this pump, putting your low idle back to where it used to be, may not work anymore. It may idle too high there now, or it may idle not high enough. So you may have to adjust this. But remember, you've got that original measurement already documented somewhere. Same way over here, if you put delivery valves in a pump, some of these delivery valves, the cut valves especially, will take so much load off of that pump that it'll actually reduce the working load for the governor and it'll pull the RPMs down at your idle. You have to corner and set your idle up. Um, a lot of moving parts in a governor just messing with one piece does not usually affect just one piece it usually affects multiple pieces that's why I say keep your baseline readings you may get into something and get so sideways and so jacked up on it that you're like heck with it put everything back where it was and start from scratch or give it up but I'm going to stop there for now, guys. If you have comments, if you have information, I am doing this to help guys like me that can't get information from guys on the pulling boards, on these other forums, guys who sit behind their keyboard and don't want to divulge that information because they're afraid some idiot like me is going to go out and do something and mess their vehicle up and then come back and point their finger. It don't work that way. If you do something to your piece of equipment, then you're taking that risk with the hope that you get a good result out of it. And I hope you do. I hope I do. But again, I do not recommend you do this. You should take your pump off. You should send it to a professional. You should let them tune it on a stand. But guys like me like to do stuff myself and figure out how things work. And we do that through trial and error. And that's what we're doing here. So my tractor that I've got outside, which is a 60, 1969 John Deere 5020 with a 619, a 250 horse 619 engine in it. And uh, I'm doing, I'm going to do everything here that we went over tonight. I'm going to try and tighten the governor spring up. I'm going to gut the AFC housing. I'm going to roll my full load stop screw in. And I'm going to try and find some delivery valves that I can put in this thing also and which now there's timing videos out there on on the interweb uh, there are TSBs you can find I found it just yesterday TSBs for timing P pumps uh, of course most of them you're going to find is for a 5.9 Cummins on a 12 valve uh, John Deere stuff you should be able to find the timing procedure for John Deere stuff in the manual timing I'm shooting from the hip here. Timing on, an, on on your diesel is however many degrees before top dead center. Uh, a 5.9 truck, 215 horse, was somewhere around like 13 to 14 degrees of timing before top dead center. You wanted to, when you're going in truck pulling and performance, you want to be able to inject that fuel into that stroke earlier. So you want to pull that advanced number on back even more. At one time, I had my truck set at 32 degrees before top dead center. It's sitting at 18 and a half degrees now, which is where a lot of folks run it. You run timing too high, you'll start getting ping. Uh, get detonation bad enough that it could start damaging pistons. But on this tractor, if you don't have a means, I've seen guys do this before. If you don't have a means to measure cam height in your pump, to get proper height to find true top dead centers to zero. You can take your front cover off where your timing gear is and get somebody to bump the engine and see, cause all your gears inside, there's a gear train. One gear may run counterclockwise and whichever one messes with it will run counterclockwise. Watch your pump gear while somebody bumps it and see which way it rolls. That'll tell you normal direction of rotation. If you're wanting to do the redneck method of advancing your timing, then you can lock that engine down to where it can't move 
take your gear loose from your pump, roll your engine. What you're wanting to do is you want to roll your pump gear backwards. If you find you a mark, you want to leave your engine there, try and take your pump gear off. You're wanting to roll that pump back, just one tooth. Roll that pump gear back and put it back on. And you have done the rough blindfolded method of advancing your timing. You do not want to do that if at all necessary. But in a pinch, if you've got no junky motor, say you've got no tractor that's been out in the field, you can still get it to run and you're just going to go ride it out until it throws a rod through the block. You can go in there and pop that loose, roll that thing a tooth or two back, put it back together, and you've just advanced your timing. So, and the thing, and you think about degrees too, you're advancing that degree, so there's 360 degrees in a circle. And you can take and mark that and see how many degrees you're roughly moving. You gotta think about it in that method too. It's not a super special number. It's either 18 and a half degrees, it's 32 degrees before top dead center. So you could go in there and find top dead center, go in there and pull your cover off, mark your cam gear, take it back out, and you could even take an angle finder and do it that way, or, or put you a zero at top and a 180 down at bottom and 90 over here and divide that up and find you 10, 20 degrees. And that's the redneck rough method of doing timing. I'm going to use the book, as long as these pumps ain't keyed to where I can't manipulate the gear on the pump. On a Dodge, it's a tapered shaft. On a Cummins, it's a tapered shaft, so you pop the gear off. You find top dead center, then you roll the engine back to where your pump is at the setting you want. You pop the gear off, bring the engine back up to top dead center, and then you tighten it back up on a tapered shaft. You can move it wherever you want to. A lot of Dodge trucks would slip the cam gear, would slip the timing gear on the cam, on the pump, and that's where you start seeing white smoke and poor performance because your timing is slipped and you're running like eight degrees timing, which sucks. So if these are keyed, then that means you will have to actually take that gear loose, roll that pump back, and then put the gear back on it at a tooth back in order to advance your timing that way. But like I said, guys, this is all free info. This is stuff I put together from tearing stuff down. This is stuff I put together from looking online, competition diesel, uh, TDR back in the day. I'm talking TDR back when TDR first came around. I was doing this stuff when I was 15, 16 year old. Back when my truck was a 97 model, this was back in 1998. I mean, Lord, we still had AOL and was dang near dial-up. I was a 15, 16 year old farm kid out there who was out there turning the screws to his truck and had one of the first smoker trucks around here and people were bringing their trucks to me to let me do stuff like this and I wasn't fond of it because of warranty and liability, yada, yada. But what I, the point I'm getting here is jump online and read, dig. And then if you can't find the information, think of a different way to word it and the info is out there it's just hard to find people don't like divulging that you cannot get on YouTube and hardly find a video like what this one's going to be where somebody tears a pump down and says this is what this screw does if you want to hot rod it this is what you do here's a governor spring screw in an RSV because finding somebody that tells you how to do an RSV governor spring adjustment is non-existent out there or if it is it's in some Arabic Indian language because they do a lot of work over there and, and in Europe and they're not translatable videos so you don't know you can see a lot of RSV governors tore down from the Indian and Pakistani type people that do a lot of pump work over there but you don't know what they're saying and so I'm trying to get the info out there for the next guy if you do this I'm asking for feedback if you do this guys let me know your results. If you go in there and you manipulate your governor spring, if you go in, if you go out, you're out there hooking it to something, put those results up. Let everybody else know. If, if, you, if you do something inside your pump and then it leads to something else and it kills it, put that info out there and let everybody else know. Try and make this a useful video. Try and make this a useful comment section to put info out there for these guys that are like me that are homegrown and do it all theirself to where we can learn and help each other out and go make some smoke and go have some fun. But I'm gonna put this pump back together. Uh, when I get ready to work on my tractor, I'm gonna make this an independent video. I've been videoing all day, making different footage of an old case tractor I've got and washing my 5020 up and getting it ready. 
and then I came in and did this tonight but I think I'm gonna make this a separate video um, because it's a it's a beast of a subject all on its own but I'm gonna put this together when I get ready to do the work on my 5020 I'm gonna try and hopefully have some type of load last time we hooked to another tractor and drug the other tractor backwards just trying to see how much more fuel it'd get what kind of load i used to do my pull truck the same way we'd pull a tractor hook to a tractor and somebody'd hold the brakes on the tractor and we'd run through there and do a, a rough test and see what it did but uh, when I, like i said it's the third time when i get ready to do my tractor guys i'll put that video up and hopefully be able to show you all the the black smoke coming out of the stack before i ever touched the full load screw the black smoke and the power that Hopefully you can see or feel as we take that screw in. Try and hook it up, check full load. If the tack won't go high enough, go to Harbor Freight and buy you a hand tack with reflective tape. That way when you're out there freewheeling that thing, you can go out there and try and get a measurement on it. Um, 3,000 RPM on some, you should be able to see that on the tachometer, but be careful that's what i say be careful guys that's that's a lot of money with your tractor out there especially if you're using i do not ever recommend doing this to your tractor that you farm with every day I, i'm lucky enough to have this tractor i've got that we pulled out of the weeds got fixed back up and it's it's a toy that's what it is so i mean if i if i lift the head gasket off this thing if i throw a rod i don't have to worry about how am i gonna get my hay up i don't have to worry about how i'm gonna cut silage don't have to worry about how i'm gonna plow the field because that tractor can sit in the back of the barn for years and it ain't going to hurt me because I don't miss it. You can find Case, Case 830s, Case 930s, Case 1030s. If you're looking for a project tractor to make a budget puller out of, it's a good tractor. You can buy those things for four or $5,000. They've got a version of a P-pump on them or an inline pump. Could be m and Sims. I'm not sure what it is, but it's the same principle. Take you a tractor like that and, and do this stuff too. Don't do this to your daily driver. Don't... Uh, don't take money from the table. Don't take the bread out of your kitchen by going up there and doing something stupid for a tractor pull and then not being able to afford to fix it back. But I'm going to quit at that, guys. I'm going to put my pump back together. I appreciate you all coming along with me. If you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. You get tons of people that will come in here and watch these videos. And I understand that some folks don't have YouTube accounts and you can't subscribe if you're not a YouTube subscriber with your own login and password. But if you are, take the time, guys. If this info is helpful, share the video. Share it to these other forums, and please hit that subscribe button. I've went all day today filming footage for everybody else's enjoyment, and I enjoy it too, don't get me wrong. I like to bring everybody along in the stuff I do. But take the time, pause, hit that subscribe button, tell your friends, share it, have them do the same thing, help our channel grow, and we can put more good, useful info and good videos like this up. Y'all have a good night. Thank you all.